on 31, we're back. Let's take a look at how we can sketch the graph of log base 2 of x plus 3. We're going to include key points and asymptotes on the graph and state the domain range and the asymptote. Now just taking a look at this argument, this graph is shifted three units left from the graph in example 3. So I just want to take note that we graphed log base 2 of x in example 3 and now we're shifting it three units left. Okay, so let's start with, I'm going to put a little separator so that I can make sure I have some space to scribble my work. For do my domain, I need to make sure that my argument is greater than zero, that it's positive. So I need to know when x is greater than negative 3. So my domain is going to be from negative 3 to infinity. And another fun thing is whatever zeroes out your argument, and we know negative 3 zeroes out my argument because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, that automatically turns into my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go put this on the graph. Okay, so there is our vertical asymptote, and we're feeling good with that one. We know this is going to be logarithmic growth because our base is greater than 1. So I know the general shape of my function. It's going to start from down here and head up. But I, I would like to get some key points on that graph just to better guide me when I graph it. And once I get the graph, I'll figure out the range. So let's figure out some key points. All right, so I'm going to make my little XY table, and I'm going to choose points intentionally. So I would like my argument to be 1. That would be nice. If I wanted my argument to be 1, I need x plus 3 to equal 1. So I would want to try when x was equal to negative 2. That would be a nice argument to have. So let's try that. If I plug in negative 2, and I'll just do it off to the side here, right? So I would have log base 2 of negative 2 plus 3. That would be log base 2 of 1. And we said whenever your argument is 1, the exponent that goes with that is 0. So there I am figuring out my x-intercept, all right? And I, again, if I wanted to algebraically do that, I would let my argument be equal to 1. I would subtract 3 from both sides, and I would get x is equal to negative 2. So there's an algebraic way of going about it. It's always a good idea to set your argument equal to 1. That's where your x-intercepts live. All right, but I would also like my, my argument to be some kind of power of 2. So now let me set my argument equal to 2 and see where we wind up. If I let my argument equal 2 and I subtract 3, I'm going to get negative 1 here. All right, well, let's try this. What would log base 2 of negative 1 be? Oh, actually, that's not what I want at all. I said this incorrectly. I would like my argument to be... Oh, I know what I did wrong. I just can't add. Sorry, my bad. I wanted to have that moment in front of you. Okay, here we go. If x is negative 1 and I want f of negative 1, that's going to be log base 2 of negative 1 plus 3. That would be log base 2 of 2, and that would be equal to 1. That's what I was trying to say. If I plug negative 1 in, I get 1 back out. All right. I would also, again, trying to keep with this, if my base is 2, I would like my arguments to be powers of 2. Let me let x plus 3 be equal to 4 this time. All right, if I do that, if I then, let me erase all this. All right, let's rerun this. All right, so now I'm letting it equal 4, because 4 is a power of 2, so x would be equal to 1. So f of 1 will be log base 2 of 1 plus 3. 
That would be log base 2 of 4. And the exponent you need on 2 to get to 4 is 2. So when I plug 1 in, I get 2 back out. So 1, 2. And you can see that I'm choosing these x values intentionally so that my y values become nice integers. So the next power of 2 that I want my argument to be equal to is 8. So I will change this to 8. If x plus 3 is equal to 8, that means x will equal 5. This will then become log base 2 of 5 plus 3, which will be log base 2 of 8. And log base 2 of 8 would be 3. So when I plug 5 in, I get 3 back out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3. There we go. So now I can start to see that logarithmic graph taking place, and I can connect the dots, keeping in mind that my graph is just going to scooch up along this, x inter um, this vertical asymptote. All right, so we got that. It's going to come here. And I can see my range goes from all the way down to all the way up. So my range is negative infinity. Oh, that doesn't look good. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, just to rattle off a few more traits, if we were going to go through them, I do want to talk about what was my x-intercept, what was my y-intercept, what was my end behavior, and did I have a hole? All right, so for my x-intercept, I can see it right here. It was when my argument was equal to 1, and I can see that's the ordered pair negative 2 comma 0. Because when x is negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and any time your argument is 1, the exponent is 0. Now for the y-intercept, I actually did have a y-intercept this time out. Because this graph had been shifted 3 units left, I have this y-intercept. We can see it there. If I plug 0 in for x, I'm going to get that the y-intercept is at 0, comma, log base 2 of 3, whatever that number is equal to. Okay. For my end behavior, I don't have a negative infinity in my domain, so there is no end behavior on the right. Oh, excuse me, no end behavior on the left. Negative infinity is on the left. And then I have my right arrow up. If I look at my argument here, it is not a fraction, so I have no holes here. And that's your basic log base 2 of x graph, but shifted three units left. Okay. All right, so with that, we're going to head on to example 5. We're going to shift your graph again. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.